Well, Zina Wooldridge, the president of the World Squash Federation, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. First off, I got to say congratulations. For the first time ever, squash has been included in the Summer Olympics when it will make the program of Los Angeles 2028. Congratulations again, and how do you feel having achieved this momentous first-time affair? Um, well, I'm just absolutely delighted. Um, <clears throat> very excited. Um, a little bit of relief um, af after the sport having tried so many times, but but really one of, of absolute delight. And I, I suspect there probably isn't a sport, um, an Olympic sport, that, that has celebrated quite as much as a squash has across the world on, on this outcome. I think for many people, they will be surprised to hear that squash has never been part of the Olympics before and that it's been a decades-long campaign for you and your sport to get included in the Olympics. Why has it finally happened for LA 2028? It's probably a combination of reasons. It, it isn't just one, one single reason. And, you know, I have to um, really acknowledge the work that um, my, my predecessors and the teams around them have put into previous bids. Um, so I think it's a number of things. One is that I think WSF, PSA and US Squash worked very effectively together to, um, to really optimise our strengths, our collective strengths, um, and I think that we, each one of those organisations had become stronger in recent years in terms of um, how they complemented each other. I think, as I say, our strategies aligned more closely with, with LA28 being the first purely private commercial bid. Um, I think the rules of the game this time had changed as well, both from LA and the IOC. We were asked strictly not to spend money on expensive commercial um, communications and um, and promotional campaigns and for a s relatively small sport such as squash that helped us significantly because we weren't in a, in a in a battle of who could spend more money on a bid and that helped us. So looking ahead to those games what might be the format for the Olympics? You'll have men's and women's individual, will you have perhaps men's and women's team events? Uh, how long will games be? How many points? Well we know what we put into a bid. We don't know then what the outcome may be because, of course, squash was one of five new sports going in, and we're the own, and, and the other were four team sports. So numbers, the numbers game is going to be very critical in terms of a, a total athlete quota. Um, so what we do know is it will be men's and women's singles. There won't be any doubles or any team event in there for simplicity purposes and to keep the athlete numbers down. So we're anticipating, um, we're hoping it will be 232 draws, but that's not guaranteed because what we do want to get is um, breadth of nation as well as the very best players in the world. Um, so the format, we, we don't know. We, we're not sure about um, what the size is going to be. We don't know what the scoring system will be. I think that will start to be determined during 2024. Um, and certainly um, it will be a combination of, 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 of discussions between um, the IOC and LA28. And of course, the IOC is going to be focused upon Paris up until, uh, up until July, August. The IOC is also looking ahead to adding new sports. They want to attract the young audience, of course. So we've added things like skateboarding, surfing, breakdancing, all these things coming up. Squash is not a new sport in that. So it's been played for many, many years around the world by people. How optimistic are you that squash will be around for the next games in 2032 or beyond? Yeah, I think we are. And, and you know, I think you can combine tradition with, um, with actually um, modernising of the sport. And I think what squash has done really well, certainly in the last 10 years, is that it's actually modernised the sport and it's very appealing to youngsters. I mean, we have got... Um, the scale of our um, our junior sanctioned events across the world, and we don't advertise enough, we don't promote enough, but we've got we've got thousands and thousands of youngsters playing um, across the world in events, and and it's growing. We've got it under 11s, under 13s, under 15s, under 17s, under 19s. I mean, we and and there is a push to actually start with them. Um, to actually include under nines, which I think is too young. So there's a lot of, of young people who are playing. It's a traditional, very traditional sport with, um, I think, a very modern feel to it. Um, and I think it meets the um, 
the Olympic ideals just so well. I want to ask really who stands out, who are the dominant players? So you just had the men's team world championships in New Zealand, Egypt retained their title at the world championships earlier this year in May. You had Noor El Sherbini and Ali Farag retain their women's and men's titles respectively. So obviously Egyptians doing fantastic in the sport. Where do the Brits rank? Who are the top countries and who are the countries where the sport is really growing? Yeah, there's, um, you know, in, the UK is still has still got the biggest footprint. It's got the most players, the most courts. Um, but there are very many nations now are starting to challenge that. I think that, you know, the Olympic status will start to change that. And we always said that being in the Olympics will change the sport because, you know, one of the big benefits of 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 getting sport of getting squash onto the Olympic programme is that it will make a real difference at national level. And for our member nation and member national federations now, suddenly they're part of the Olympic family within their nation. So it, it, it's not just at a, a global level that this is going to have an impact. It's at national level. Um, and suddenly there will be, squash will be on, um, with part of the Olympic family and part of the Olympic funding streams within nations. And suddenly there will be Olympic medals at stake. And I, I think that's probably where we're going to, we are going to start seeing a difference. And we may see a change in the world order. It will take some time. Um, in, in perhaps in the next 10 years if squash stays in and we're optimistic that we're going to work hard to make sure that squash does stay in. Well Zena, congratulations once again. I am very optimistic as well that squash will have earned its place and continue that. Fantastic work. Squash really, you know, part of the game is now and here to stay. So Zena, thank you very much for your time and all your optimism about your sport. We look forward to its continued growth and look forward to seeing it in the Olympics in about four years' time. Thank you very much. Thank you.